the large cave that overlooks the Shanidar Valley in northeastern Iraq has provided shelter to human groups intermittently during the past 100,000 years. During that time, the various residents of Shanidar Cave left behind considerable cultural debris and, among the various sediments on the cave floor, the remains of their dead. Through the circumstances of preservation and discovery, the skeletal remains of nine individuals from the Shanidar Cave have become known. These are the Shanidar Neanderthals, the most well-known being Shanidar 1, 2, and 3. They consist of the partial skeletons of seven adults and two infants, which range in completeness from a few bones to a largely intact skeleton. Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, were stoutly built and big-headed humans, and lived at the same time and in the same areas as modern humans. But they went extinct. Anthropologists have tried to solve the mystery of Neanderthals' fate since the first fossils were discovered in the Neanderthal Valley in Germany in the 1800s. Since Darwin's time, scientists have debated the relationship between Neanderthals and modern humans. Neanderthals sometimes seem like our primitive ancestors, recognizably human, yet not fully human. Neanderthals often have been judged by us as inferior, but their exact fate remains a mystery. Whatever happened, we won the war of evolution. I'm not suggesting it was a blitzkrieg, with modern humans marching across the land and executing the Neanderthals. Our victory was far from a foregone conclusion. Until around 100,000 years ago, an alien observer would have no basis for predicting the extinction of rival human species, or Homo sapiens' current global domination. For hundreds of thousands of years, Neanderthals survived harsh climates with bitterly cold temperatures, not to mention predators including saber-toothed tigers, cave bears and cave lions, using simple tools and primitive clothing. They were a long-lasting and successful lineage, until modern humans came along. Unlike the Shanidar 1 and Shanidar 2 skeletons, which were discovered at a later time, the skull of Shanidar 3 was never recovered. The skeleton initially received little attention, due to its fragmentary state and lack of a skull. A particular note to researchers, has been the presence of a trauma wound produced by sharp force, to the left ninth rib of this skeleton. The wound that ultimately killed the Mesopotamian Neanderthal 50,000 years ago, was most likely caused by a lightweight spear, the kind modern humans used, but Neanderthals did not. This Neanderthal man was armed and dangerous, but analysis indicates the wound was from a throwing spear, and it appears that modern humans had throwing weapon technology and Neanderthals didn't. Researchers think the best explanation for this injury is a projectile weapon, or dart, and given who used those weapons, implies an act of interspecies aggression. Investigators used a specially calibrated crossbow, copies of ancient stone points, and numerous animal carcasses to make their deductions. While narrowing the range of possible causes for the Mesopotamian Neanderthals wound, and raising the possibility of an encounter between modern humans and the Neanderthals. The victim was one of the nine Neanderthals discovered between 1953 and 1960 in a cave in northeastern Iraq's Zagros Mountains. Now called Shanidar III, he was a 40 to 50 year old, five and a half feet tall, male with signs of arthritis and a sharp, deep slice in his left ninth rib. A wound to the ribs suggests that the Neanderthal died of complications from the stab wound by a sharp spear. Bone growth around the wound indicates that Shanidar III lived for at least several weeks, after the injury with the spearhead still embedded. Recent research has suggested that the injury may have been caused by a long-range projectile. The presence of early modern humans, armed with projectile weapons in Western Asia around the same time, has been taken to imply that this injury may have resulted from interspecies conflict. But exactly who allegedly killed this Neanderthal, and why? Humans are the only animals who have the ability to accurately throw an object, at extremely high velocities with great accuracy. This skill has been essential to our survival and success as a species, and primarily used now to throw footballs and baseballs. Archaeological evidence suggests that by 50,000 years ago modern humans, but not our Neanderthal cousins, had developed projectile hunting weapons. We used spear throwers, called atlatls, that connected to darts and spears to effectively lengthen the thrower's arm and give the weapons a power boost. Hunting became common around 2 million years ago, a development which may have been brought about by an adaptation, allowing early hominids to throw spears at high speeds, over long distances with great accuracy. 
The first evidence of spears, our most powerful ancient weapons, appeared during the emergence of Homo erectus, our bigger, faster, stronger ancestor. When comparing the physiology of Homo erectus to modern humans, our ancient ancestor had a body almost identical to a modern human and could throw just as well as we throw today. The ability to store energy in the shoulder first evolved in Homo erectus. Along with the open swing that our arms can produce, which is unique among the primates, is our ability to twist our hips during a throw. That combination of abilities made throwing much easier. That is why we don't see spear points that could penetrate animal hide, which indicate the use of throwing spears, until Homo erectus arrived on the scene. Once you start hunting large animals, if you don't kill it with the first throw, you just enrage the beast. It is unclear when exactly our shoulders settled into the right position to throw a weapon, but it may have been a primary driver in the evolution of our ancestors. But a lot more goes into spear throwing than just physiology, specifically the intelligence to craft a spear that can be thrown accurately at great speed. Around 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens developed the most deadly accurate weapon in history. The atlatl was a simple, but effective weapon, and a vital part of the prehistoric toolkit. The atlatl is a launching stick, and it increases the velocity of the dart and the force of impact on the target. Prehistoric hunters certainly understood its mechanical advantage over a spear thrown only with the bare hand. It was superior to the older technology and was the weapon of choice for millennia, supplanted only by the invention of the bow and arrow. As modern human weapons technology advanced, Neanderthals continued using heavy thrusting spears in hunting, and never used lighter throwing spears. Looking back at this Paleolithic murder case, researchers evaluated all the possible causes of the rib injury with the aid of contemporary tools. The injury is consistent with a number of scenarios, including wounding from a long-range projectile weapon or dart. The investigators rigged up a special crossbow to fire Stone Age projectiles, using calibration marks on the crossbow to tell them how much force they were delivering with each launch. Those tests revealed the delivered energy needed to create similar wounds in the ribs of pig carcasses, which the researchers used as an approximation of a Neanderthal's body. The researchers also estimated the impact of using a thrusted, rather than thrown spear, the kind of stabbing that Neanderthals are thought to have employed. That technique produced higher kinetic energy, and caused more massive rib damage than Shanidar III sustained. The researchers also considered that the downward sweep of a knife could have the correct trajectory to produce Shanidar III's rib injury. However, knife attacks generally involve a higher kinetic energy, and the weapon that created this injury was thrown with low kinetic energy at a low momentum, which is consistent with a spear or dart thrown using a spear thrower. But we know that Shanidar III did not immediately die from this event, there was too much healing for the death to have been a direct result of this injury. The wounded Neanderthal's rib had apparently started healing before he died. Comparing the wound to medical records from the American Civil War, a time before modern antibiotics, suggested to the researchers that he died within weeks of the injury, due to associated lung damage from a stabbing or piercing wound. This injury would have likely resulted in a collapsed lung which, in a world without advanced medicines, could prove deadly. Around 100,000 years ago, tall, long-limbed early modern humans lived in the caves of Kafzeh and school, in modern-day Israel. Their remains suggest a surprisingly sophisticated people, defying the conventional timeline of Homo sapiens migration out of Africa. But ultimately, these people did not survive in the region. Two particular graves have been found with telling signs of their culture. School 5 was a burial with the mandible of a wild boar on his chest, dating to around 100,000 years ago. The skull displays prominent supraorbital ridges and a jutting jaw, but with the rounded brain case of modern humans. Kafzeh 11 was the grave of an adolescent male, buried in a pit dug in the bed rock. The skeleton was lying on its back, with the legs bent to the side and both hands placed on either side of the neck, and in the hands were the antlers of a large red deer clasped to his chest. The age of these people challenged the widely held idea that Homo sapiens had not left Africa until about 60,000 years ago. They gathered shells from a shoreline more than 20 miles away, decorated them and strung them as jewelry. But the people seemed to represent a rare tale of failure in Homo sapiens' official record. 
they came from Africa, reached the Levant, then retreated or went extinct before a second, successful wave of African Homo sapiens arrived in the region around 60,000 years ago, armed with better weapons. While scientists have been unable to precisely date his remains, Shanidar III most likely lived and died as recently as 50,000 years ago. If so, he could have encountered modern humans who were just returning to the area after a 30,000-year hiatus, when the climate had warmed up again.